Okay, so we're here, we're gonna be doing a balance video for the Thanos Pro X uh, by Digital Photo. Uh, a lot of people have been asking how to balance it, um, but there's a couple of stages that you need to go through first before we actually get onto the actual uh, Thanos Pro rig. So we need to choose the gimbal. We will go the Crane 3S because I'm utilizing uh, the Sony FX6, which is my big uh, cinema camera which is a bit of a beast it is quite heavy and the crane 3s is a very very heavy payload which does handle that quite nicely so the first step obviously is to attach the base plate which screwdriver one of the main tools you'll need obviously to attach your base plate is your flathead screwdriver so we'll take off my tripod mount and obviously take off the base plate first. So this is the Zhuin Crane 3S. The great thing about this one, it has dual mount here. So you got your uh, 3 8 and quarter 20, which fits perfectly onto the FX6 right here. Um, the good thing about having dual mount is that it doesn't spin when you actually have it on the gimbal itself. Uh, so it keeps it nice and steady. Okay, so once you've got your base plate on, you want to plan out exactly how you're going to have it onto the gimbal itself. Um, so. I'm gonna make this a relatively heavy rig. The only thing I'm gonna be removing is the actual handle here itself. So set it up exactly how you want. If you do have uh, just front ND filters on there, put the ND filters on, take the, uh, the lens caps off, uh, have it exactly how you exactly want it onto the gimbal first. Uh, because you don't want to balance it and then start putting stuff on because that will throw the balance off. Okay. First thing I like to do is unlock the axis, but then lock them back up to this position. Mount it directly on here. Bring it as close to the edge as possible. So you want to try and keep that center of gravity right down the middle of the gimbal. That's as far over as it can go at the moment. Uh, like I said, make sure that the monitor, if you do have a monitor, that it is out in that same position. If you do have a zoom lens, this is a 24 to 105. I like to balance it so it's at 50 millimeters. See how it extends out, the barrel extends. So you'll need to be aware when you extend that barrel, when it's on the gimbal, it changes the balance. So to put it in a happy medium between 50 or 70, uh, but I usually keep it at roughly about 50 anyway, um, and I don't really change that. But if you are using cinema lenses, you won't really have an issue like this one, the Mica 50 mil. Obviously it's a prime lens, the barrel doesn't extend, so you won't have any balancing issues with that one. Unlock this axis right here. So, obviously I've balanced it already. Let's just say it's out of balance, like this way. If you put it up into the air like this and it falls forward, you just need to counterbalance it. So coming back this way so it doesn't fall forward, falling forward, falls back, just very small micro adjustments. You need to get it relatively close first off, so that's pretty good. Lock that axis off, and now you're going to see how the gimbal tilts forward. You're gonna move the base plate on this side backwards a touch until it's perfectly balanced. That looks pretty good. Minor adjustments, could go a touch further back now. 
very, 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 very small amounts. Lock it off. See how it's nice and steady there. Put it back to the horizontal phase and it's pretty steady. So that axis is good. So I can lock that one off up here. Now we've got the one at the back. So we'll unlock that. Most likely it's already balanced. Let's make sure that it's not balanced. It's the same thing again. If it does tilt that way, we need to counterbalance and bring it over this way. Same again, goes that way, so bring it this way. More. It's pretty close there, probably a touch more. Once we unlock that one, unlock that. We've got the two axes unlocked. Okay, we'll lock that off and we'll lock this one off. Pretty happy. Now, the third one, which is this slide rail. So, we'll unlock that. Let's put it off balance. Now, the best way I like to do this is bring it onto its side and then tilt it over. You can see how it tilts forward. So, I need to extend it the opposite way. Ooh, this one's a bit touchy. Same again, opposite way, opposite way. It's getting pretty close there. Almost, so see how it almost fully balances. That's pretty good. We'll lock it off and we'll check it out. Be minor adjustments from there. But essentially, if you tilt the gimbal and move it into certain situ uh, positions, it shouldn't twist around. It should stay exactly where it's meant to stay uh, steady. Once you've got it all set up, minor adjustments. But the, uh, the closer you actually set this up to perfectly balanced, the better it is going to be on the motors. Uh, specifically, when you do have it on the Thanos Pro Rig, it's actually going to stabilize a lot better and you're not going to get that gimbal overload shake like this. Um, so that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Spark it up and you'll see. Turns on quite nice. Now, I do recommend uh, that you calibrate this as well through the settings, but it's already been calibrated because I've used this many times before, but nice and stable. It should be quite easy on the motors with that one. Um, but I do end up calibrating it every time I use it anyway, uh, just in case, you know, I put a couple of different cords and stuff uh, to it. Now you may have to uh, rebalance this when you put the HDMI cord in because the HDMI cord uh, does add a little bit of bottom weight, so it will tilt this way. So you just have to, you know, rebalance it a little bit. It's only micro adjustments anyway, unless you get really um, light HDMI cords. Okay, so the first thing is, um, let's just quickly lock off all these axes uh, because these don't need to be loose. Actually makes it a lot more difficult when it's all loose. So that's perfect, that's ready to go on. Now, first thing I do want to mention is that Digital Photo did listen uh, to the customers and I really, really appreciate uh, their honesty and uh, I suppose their quality of their equipment. So the Thanos Pro uh, X did have a couple of issues here which they sent through this little steel plate uh, because I was getting some bending issues uh, because I did have the Ari Amira on this, which is, you know, 20 odd kilos, the whole rig. Uh, so it did bend it and um, yeah, because it was quite cheap steel. Uh, but the rest of this is extremely good quality. Uh, so thank you for sending that through and I'm sure they're gonna include it with all the other 
uh, vests as well. They also uh, took my advice and made some adjustments with this piece right here. So the shaft here actually extends out. I was having some bottoming out issues when it bends like this and the camera was coming right across. Uh, you can see on the old one. So if the camera is mounted directly onto that plate and you move it up like this, it was hitting on the edge here. Uh, so I wasn't uh, really getting some nice stable shots with the Ari. I had to make sure that it was down here and not tilt it up like this. So yeah, um, I did have to put a little riser plate on top of that and then put the Ari on top of that as well. Um, but thank you for sending that one over. Fabulous design and I really, really appreciate them taking time to make those adjustments. Okay, so the Thanos Pro X uh, is a very good professional uh, stabilizing rig. Does come with this shaft here. Uh, then you've got your weights and then you've got a counterbalance thing here as well. So this slides left and right, so you can counterbalance it from left and right. So very, very handy to have that counterbalance here. And all these rails slide across, which is really handy. So uh, first of all, bring a tripod over. Do recommend chuck a shot bag on here as well, because uh, if you don't have a shot bag, could potentially tilt over because you've got so much weight. So. Chuck this directly on top of the light stand uh, like that, basic. Now you're actually going to take the tripod off at the bottom and this directly mounted on top. Bit of a difficult part, but just make sure you wind it on until it eventually catches, eventually. Is it, is it catching? Nope, not quite. The tripod, there we go, finally. So it does, uh, the good thing is it comes with a quarter 20 and a 3 8 mount at the bottom as well. So. The Crane 3S is a 3 8 mount, uh, whereas you've got, you know, your smaller Weevil S, which at the bottom is a, a quarter 20 mount and a couple of other gimbals as well. Um, but nonetheless, you can get a quarter 20, so 3 8 to quarter 20 adapter that you can chuck underneath there. Now, this becomes the, uh, the difficult part, balancing this perfectly. Now, a lot of people will have this balanced. So when you bring it like this, it is perfectly flat and doesn't go backwards. This depends on how you wanna actually shoot. The actual RE Trinity, yes, that is exactly how they do it because if you want to go into this mode here, which is the javelin mode, uh, you pretty much won't touch it and it will stay exactly there. I personally do prefer it to go back to that position almost like a steady cam. So dropping down, but not three seconds, you know, maybe three seconds, it's, it's quite slow, maybe four seconds if you can. But it's up to you how you wanna balance this, but if you do wanna do it the perfect Trinity way, if it does go down, then you just need to make sure the shaft is uh, shorter or take off the weights. I prefer to keep the weights there and make this shorter. So pushing it, loosening, and it's a very, there we go. More, same thing, micro adjustments, and you'll see it's almost dead center there. Now the reason why it is toppling over as well is because it is top heavy here. Uh, because of this. So you will actually have to put more counterweights down the bottom here on this side. Um, but nonetheless, I keep my hands on here the whole time, just like this, touching it. Once it's all um, put together properly, you'll see. So tighten that up, make sure it's tight. 
before you chuck it up. Now, what you wanna do is see how this wants to go backwards. Counterweight this down the bottom here. I like to start off with moving the center shaft here in the opposite direction, vice versa. Now you can see how it's going this way. This will bring it back to the center, hopefully. A little bit too much. Now see how I'm adjusting it very, 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 very slightly. Now it's going that way. Too much now. Micro adjustments. So this will take a while to sort of do because it's such small movements. Now, you don't have to be absolutely perfect, but the closer you are to it being completely dead center like this, the better it's going to perform when you actually have the rig on there. So, sometimes near enough is good enough with this thing if you cannot get it absolutely perfect. Uh, but sometimes if you did make sure that um, it's does go down rather than staying flat, it'll actually stay a little bit uh, more vertical for you. But nonetheless, that's pretty good. Just for a test, unlock all the axes, spark her up or turn it, turn it on. Spark her up, Aussie slang. Then you can see exactly how it works. Look how beautifully smooth that is. So this is how you'll be operating the gimbal. You can go from under slung back to over the top, javelin mode, basic. So that's pretty much uh, the balance of that. Now we actually have the next part is chucking on the, the stabilizer chest rig. Okay, part three. Now, we've actually got the chest rig, very basic. This uh, is best to have a second person doing this for you, so if you have a grip, they are the person to do this. Do the two top ones first. Make sure the cl clips are unclipped first. Now you have to clip these up at the top. You can do it by yourself. Like I said, it is easier if you do have a grip because they can do it for you and then tighten the straps. Last one. Where's the third one? Oh shit. Most important one. This takes a lot of load off your back. So clip those across, just like rollerblades back in the day. So loosen this up, slide it up just to get it out of the way. Great design how they've done that, which is really good. Now I like to tighten this as physically tight as possible. Those steel plates make it so much better. As tight as possible. Uh, unfortunately, I'm a little bit skinny around the waist, so it doesn't clip up because of the way how skinny I am. So. Top ones clip up, very nice. Now bring this back down to, I usually put it around my waist sort of height. It really, really depends. Uh, it does come stock this way. I did notice it's uh, a lot of people were using it left-handed. Up to you, if you are left-handed, use it left-handed. Spin it 
to your left hand side so you can use it right handed which definitely suits me more make sure that's tight now you have this here this is the big thing about the Thanos Pro X is that it has a 40 pound load so it is a much heavier load onto this this is your uh, locking pin facing upwards chuck this directly into there a bit finicky throw the locking pin in there so you're all locked now the only thing you need to adjust you've got two sections here the tension through this spring and the tension through this spring you do use this tool here in there you can do it by hand as well up to you um, does have a little part here where it shows uh, looser and tighter which way uh, you actually go which is uh, very very handy to have so once that's on it's pretty basic um, unlock all these axes again spark it up again turned on uh, once again does help if you do have a grip because they can help you but you can do it by yourself hold the shaft grab onto this section here and make sure she's in and that's it so the way I like to have it is that this is flat and this is flat this and this so you can make it tighter or looser, depending on the level you actually want it to sit. So I like to have it uh, sitting roughly eye height uh, because I keep my left hand on this part pretty much the whole time. Definitely need to put some WD-40 on that one as well. It's a little bit through here. Yeah, it's just metal on metal. But WD-40 on that will actually stop that squeak not good to have on set but uh, you can see here under slung mode now see how there's a lot of resistance pulling it back up loosen these right here like I said you can do them with your hands or do it with the uh, the red adjustment and you can see how there's less resistance now and you can go under sling quite fast come back up to the top uh, a lot faster uh, so it all depends on your setup but should be able to stand there without holding it and once it's purely balanced it is very 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 easy to control this thing but one hand on here and the other hand on here now when I am on set I do chuck my monitor right here so you can see there's a quarter 20 mount right here or you can use a magic arm. It's really up to you how you want to do that, but attach your monitor onto here, then you're actually looking at this, or you could actually attach your monitor down the bottom as well. Uh, but the only issue with this is that when you do go into javelin mode, you've lost your monitor. You can only use the monitor if you are like a steady cam, which is perfectly fine, which is why I like to have the monitor attached directly to this now also uh, if you did have a wireless uh, focus motor right here you can chuck the wireless focus motor onto this part and focus with this with the monitor there it can be on the side of the monitor however you actually want to do that but uh, that's pretty much how you balance the Thanos Pro X it's uh, very similar or exactly the same as the Thanos Pro 2 um, or any other RE Trinity rig. So, yeah, well, I really need to chuck some WD-40 on there. It's not selling it. <laughs> um, but this is very handy uh, for a couple of commercials that I've done in the past because of having it in that low underslung mode and going across, that controls a lot of the Z-axis movement. So a lot of the up and down bouncing is what you'll actually get when you're trying to hold the gimbal just there. Uh, this eliminates that a lot and having it in this mode 
you can actually do some really nice, smooth tracking left and tracking right. You can even dolly in and dolly out with the javelin mode quite steady, which is great. Or just use your body. But yeah, that's it from me, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you found this video useful. If you did, hit that thumbs up. That would be absolutely amazing. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, let's get it.